All right, good morning, everybody. I am on a webinar with my good friend, Chopper Russo. Good morning, Chopper. Good morning, Mike. How you doing, brother? Chopper, uh, I just want to say congratulations. The, uh, the Real Trends report came out, and I was blown away. I wasn't surprised, but I was definitely blown away. Uh, can you share with the group what those numbers look like? What, what did the Real Trends report uh, say? Well, last Friday, they did the 1,000 in the United States, and uh, our team was ranked number two in the United States. And then on Wednesday, we got – oh, I'm sorry. In the USA, we got ranked number 20. I'm getting ahead of myself. And then, all right, on, all right. And then on Wednesday, in Jersey, we got ranked number two in the state of Jersey. So 20 in the USA and two from uh, – two in New Jersey. So that was exciting. I mean, really exciting. We're talking several million real estate agents and you just blew it out of the water. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah so what we've been doing yeah. on these calls, Chop, mm -hmm. we've been talking a lot about past, present, and future. And, you know, as much as we are trying to push forward as we open up in our marketplace over here in New York, this is very relevant because there's going to be a transition. However we look at it, transition could be how we operate our business virtually, in person, and then also possibly an economic transition, which I would love for you to share on, on, this, uh, on this meeting. So start off with past, and I would love to hear about your past and how, number one, how did you get into the real estate business? And uh, talk to me about individual agent and, and what you did as an individual, uh, how you marketed yourself and built yourself up. So let's start with that first. Well, in my other life, I was a furniture manufacturer based in Union City, New Jersey. And then we had a factory in Catania, Sicily, and then a third one in Shanghai, China. My grandfather started the business back in 1921. And I made the very ornate furniture that you put plastic covers on. And Brooklyn was a hot spot for me, you know. But I'm, I'm running up and down Pitkin Avenue, rings on, this and that. Who's getting shot? And I got like 45,000 cash on me. So... Um, we sold to some of the toughest neighborhoods in the United States, and we sold to kings and queens overseas. And uh, I did some business with our uh, present president, did a couple of his hotels and uh, casinos, restaurants, and then finally I did one of his last sets on The Apprentice. But, um, you know, we got hit with a perfect storm between 9-11. Uh, from the rooftop of our factory, you could see the second plane hit, and uh, that changed us forever because uh, generally our, our uh, primary consumer in the United States was anyone first generation, plus um, and African Americans. And everybody took it on the chin at the same time. We had Teamsters and insurance and taxes, and it was a perfect storm. So we had always owned, we owned a lot of apartment buildings. And uh, like I did my first rehab when I was eight, and I always had fun doing real estate. So it was easy segue for me. You know, uh, I was getting divorced at the time and I let my brother keep the factory and uh, I went on to bigger and better things. Um, I will tell you this, I have never from the day I started ever put in a listing, okay? But I was doing, um, I started off commercial because my first deal was a Walgreens, Starbucks and Columbia Savings Bank. So my broker at the time, uh, Barry Collier, may he rest in peace. He says, oh, you should partner with someone. So I partnered with this young lady and after about nine months, I realized I was doing 98% of the work and she was doing 2%. And I remember, remembered an old adage that my grandfather always said, partnership is the only ship that doesn't float. So uh, from there, I, uh, I started. So, yeah, your, so your first deal was a, a pretty big commercial deal, huh? Oh, six figures, yeah. And they gave me an extra 25K because I threw in Starbucks. So I was like, I was dancing. Wow. So that's, that gave you then, you, then you were hooked in, uh, in the business then after that. Well, well, honestly, I tried to keep my toes in the, um, in, in, I was trying to do both. And then uh, I was supposed to run the five boroughs in Jersey for a company and they hired somebody else. And that's when I made the decision in May, 2010 and said, I'm only doing real estate full time. And uh, the rest is history. Now let's talk about that. 2010, you get into the business it was certainly post uh, the economic crash in 2008. So now 2010, you're getting into, you're getting into the business 
And the funny thing is, Chopper, a lot of people weren't getting into the business. They were getting out of the business in 2010. Tell me how, how it went when you first, what was your, what was your first thing you got in? Like you, you buckled up. We got a lot, we got new agents in our office, in our industry. What would you, what did you start out with? What, what did you do first? Well, I realized that at my age, I hadn't hit 50 yet, but I was known as the furniture guy. So now I had to become the real estate guy. So I looked at the way people marketed. I've been doing marketing for years, you know, even when I was in college, when I worked for the Pabst Brewery, I helped them with some marketing for colleges. Um, so I said, let me call, I, I, I got to look different. So I had a good looking dog, English Bulldog. I always went to parochial school, so I was good with a tie. So I put the red tie on me and red tie on the dog and it carved out a little niche for us. But the good thing was, Everybody's like, at 2010, the sky's falling. It's the worst time to get involved. Yeah. And, and it was the greatest time because <laughs> I got like $100,000 worth of marketing for like 25 grand because these guys were dying. You know, and I came from a wholesale background. So, uh, you know, I'm throwing cash around. And they're yeah, like, and see, that's, that's what's interesting, Chopper. And, and I'm glad you brought that up here. I always like to talk a little bit about the past. Y you know, you got into it, fresh mindset. Correct. And something that I've been sharing with new agents getting into the industry, they actually now uh, post this stay at home uh, situation. They're actually almost better off because it's a fresh start for almost everybody in the industry. And you came in in 2010 and I knew at that time that there were a lot of negative people in our space, but you, you came in like you didn't know any better. So you're exactly. like, yo, hey, all I know is I get cheap marketing. I'm going to get out there and then boom, you, you grew your business. So now as you grew your business, so you're a big marketing machine. And by the way, I wish, you know, in fact, I hope after this call, you can send me the link to the video with the, with the dog. Okay. That, that video is priceless. You, before a lot of people were into video marketing. So when did you step into video? Was it early in 2010 or 11? When did you get into that video? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, you know, I was doing TV commercials. Um, you know, I was big on education. So, like, I flew Se to Seattle twice to be New Jersey's first master certified negotiation expert. You know, I didn't listen to these people because they're like, oh, what's that alphabet soup? And I'm like, just shut up. You know, this is before Jersey required CE. So I just, look, there was nobody that, I, I've always had coaches but there was never anybody in the office. I remember when I first started and thank goodness this lady's out of our office. Okay. I mean like today's Friday, it's beautiful. It's glorious. I would say to her, Oh wow. Look at the weather. It's so beautiful. And she turned around and said, you know, it's supposed to rain on Wednesday. So, you know, oh, I, I know some people like that. <laughs> D and G doom and gloom. But, um, you know, to, to answer your question, I always thought outside the box. I, I, I don't advertise like everyone that I sold a zillion houses. You know, I do a lot of stuff with the nonprofits because I believe in that, you know. So um, now let's, let's start right, let's go into that part of it. So you were a big marketer. You yeah, got into the business, big marketer, but let's talk about, and this is still your past, how you built this machine that you stood around, that surrounded nonprofits. So walk us through the why and then, and then Tell us, tell us what you did and how, how you're able to build this machine. Oh, uh, look, I, I've always marketed differently. I don't like the way a lot of realtors market. Like, and I don't like when the realtors are there with their arms crossed and all that nonsense, you know. Just from my picture with me and the dog, it stands out. What happened was I was always did volunteer work. And uh, I was a chairman of our high school, Don Bosco, which is much better in St. Peter's Prep that our friend Ganelli went to. I have to throw that in there. Um, as soon as uh, it was like, yeah, I, I did it from 98 to 2010. One of the mommies in town said, why don't you get on the Oakland Education Foundation? I started with that. And then they're like, uh, the mayor came to me and says, can you help, help us with Oakland public events? I was like, yeah, I got time. You know, I wasn't blessed with any kids. I was divorced at the time. You know, one day I got a call from my buddy. He's like, hey, congratulations, you're chairman of Oakland Public Events. I said, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> it was on you know, the uh, Channel 77. So I called the mayor. And I said, what's this? I'm chairman now? What the hell are you doing? She goes, you can't refuse me. I said, first of all, you're not Italian. You, you're not allowed to quote my favorite movie, okay? But it's been a lot of fun. And I'm in a bunch of organizations. So, look, 
they all have tight budgets. So I was like, I don't need to show you all the houses I sold or what I did. Send me, you know, the ladies auxiliary pancake, you know, the, the Easter egg hunt, the carnival. I'm doing something now for the Knights of Columbus that I'm involved in. Uh, we're raising money to go to a, um, a, um, a shelter in Patterson. And then the girls from the green team got something with some artist stuff. So it was just easier. You know, look, it cost me to do locally, it cost me about 4,500 bucks, but it's money well spent because they don't have the money to do it, you know? And, and from there, Mike, I took it a step further. I, you know, I, as I'm selling houses wherever I'm at, but my base here is open. Of course, the landscape is here, right? Perfect time. But anyway, um, I talked to the clients and they didn't know like we had a volunteer fire department, volunteer ambulance. So six years ago, we started a thing called Choptoberfest. I call it one-stop shopping for 501Cs, the nonprofits. So I get a tent and I got the ladies auxiliary club for the fire department, uh, volunteer fire, vol uh, volunteer ambulance. I got green team, environmental, you name it, whatever 501C. So you bring all the all the 501C3. So just to make let me just make sure I'm clear with everybody on the uh, on the webinar today. So 501C3s, they're charitable causes that the, they don't get taxed, right? I mean, I'm not. By the way, obviously, not an attorney, not an accountant, but this this is very common for charitable causes to be uh, classified as 501C3 uh, nonprofit. So they don't they don't get taxed on the donations, right? Yes. I apologize. It's all right. We don't hear it, Chops. I'm going to reach out the window and hit him in the head over here. You um, can't make these live webinars up. So, no. and, and also what I want to mention to the rest of the group, so I want to roll it back for a second to what Chopper said before. You know, Chopper does this because he's really passionate about it. And, uh, you know, and, and guys, uh, Chopper is in Oakland, New Jersey, and he's ranked, uh, just to bring that back, Oakland, New Jersey, ranked number uh, 11 in the country. What would you say? Was it? 20. 20. 20 in the country. So he's doing that in Oakland, New Jersey, and it's more of a suburban town. But I hope you guys are all listening that you could do something like this and then build upon it. You know, that's if you want to get involved. Remember, there's four types of real estate agents, and one of them is the networker type. And networking is also getting involved in your local community. It does work. So I just want to prep. I wanted to say that, Chopper, because over the years, uh, me myself have heard things like this in my career, and um, you know sometimes agents are like, well, <laughs> that's all hokey. I don't know, you know, I don't have time to do stuff in my community. And, it, and by the way, it's not for everyone. But I've done it myself. Uh, as you said, you go from the heart. You, you're not there to show people how many houses you've sold. You go, you help, and then there you build on it. So I love what you've done. Chop Chop Tower Fest is just an amazing idea, bringing all the volunteer organizations together under one umbrella so they get the support of the community. So let's. Let's continue building on that. So these yeah. carnivals, what, what else do you got in there? Well, look, you know, I want to say, I want to go back to what you were saying. I had an agent call me once, go, oh, I'm going to do that up by me. I'll be good for business. I said, stop. You don't do it for business. You do it because you like it. If you get out of it, get business out of it, that's, that's fine. But if that's your intention, they'll see right through you. Like I was, um, I was chairman of the advisory committee for Rabari, which is a local non-kill shelter. You know, and it was going well, but things happened in there. So we pulled away. We, we disbanded the, the, the board. And it wasn't because it wasn't benefiting us business wise. It wasn't benefiting the, the town, you know, and then I'm on the dog park committee. But uh, yeah, you got to do it because you believe in it because you like it. Look, I have no children. I got dogs, as you can hear them barking. I can do more for kids without having one and not having to pay for a tuition than having kids. So you know, um, it's been fun. You know, it's like I said, I was doing the alumni thing for 12 years and then I was available. So I like it. I enjoy it. And, and it helps everybody out. You know, at Choptoberfest, <clears throat> we had the bouncy castles. I got Winnie the Pooh, Mickey Mouse. And then we got the video trailer. Then we got, we got all different foods there and stuff. And a DJ, you know. Beautiful, it, beautiful thing, Chopper. So now I know what agents are saying. We went through the past, and, and this is you're still your present. You're still doing this today. Uh, and I see, I love your cup, the Chopper Team uh, mug. So now let's talk about your individuals. When did you start growing the team? After I got rid of the partnership, 
I read that free book from uh, Keller Williams when I was down in Jersey Shore. And my first hire was, was an admin. I went through a few admins and then I had a couple different buyer's agents. I mean, listen, I-, I so, so let's just, wait, I just want to chop keep us on track. So we, we, you hired the admin first. Correct. How long, and the administrative assistant, how long until you hired the first agent that's on your team? Uh, six months, about, one year. Yeah, about six months. And, uh, and why did you do that? Because the, 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 when you had the admin, did you see a growth in your business after you hired the admin? Is that what happened before? You- yes. And, and the one, the, the one buyer's agents, we did 68 transactions. She did three, I did 65. So she was gone. And, uh, we changed the admin, got another admin. Had another buyer's agent who called to quit because she said I was making her work too much. She was working 50 hours a week and I, at the time, was working 80. So we, I went through a lot. I went, th- and then. <clears throat> so, but I want to keep, so this way, we, we, the biggest, biggest factor for you has always been that core, the, the administrative assistance. That was always the first. That was always what, it, it sounds to me, that's what gave you leverage to build your business bigger, though. Let's just, let, so this way. Right, so that, that the core has always been to make sure you have uh, someone assist you personally, so you go out there and do what you do best, and that's go generate leads. Is that correct? Yes. And <clears throat> excuse me. Here's the best way to quantify it. You know how much money you make a year. You know how many hours you work a year. So divide your hours into your gross, and that's what you make per hour. Most admins. It's around 10 to $15, give or take a few dollars. So I knew from the get-go, I've never put a listing in. I don't type fast, this and that. So it's worth it for me to pay an admin to put the listings in because I can make more money doing more uh, revenue generating jobs. To me, to enter a, you know, a listing, I'm not generating any, any revenue. So for anybody, if you make an exit, look, let's just say you're making $80 an hour, $100 an hour. Well, you're losing that money when you're, when you're doing all the, all these tasks, pay somebody 15 bucks an hour and you come out way ahead. And that's how you grow exponentially. And then at a certain point, then you have to bring on a buyer's agent. You know, typically they say uh, on average, an individual agent can do about 65 transactions. So, you know, for everybody and that's, that's in the state of New Jersey at price points. What's what's the median price point? I'm 400, 450. 400, 450. Very good. But well, we also do commercials, so that jumps the number. So. Jumps the number a little bit. So now walk me through, as we're kind of getting closer to the present time, uh, we try to refrain from talking about the different, you know, making this a commercial, but we know you advertise on different portals out there like Realtor.com, Zillow, Street mm-hmm. Easy, Trulia. So walk us through that progression. So you've hired the agent, then you grew your team a little bit more. Tell me a little bit how you market. So you did the traditional marketing. Do you prospect at all? Do you do Fizbo's expired? So is that kind of like next time? I had some people do it. You know, you know where I, I really cut my teeth when it first came out? Every door direct mail. I was the first one to do that. And that's been my strength. And it's ironic to this day, you know, it's been around for like nine years. People are like, oh, I saw so-and-so, they're copying your postcards. You know, it's, it's great when you have the opportunity to be the first. So you postcards know. work for you. So, I mean, you, he, guys, Chopper is a marketing machine. Uh, postcards, TV, TV videos, community, nonprofit. My goodness, it's just a, a marketing machine. And, and if you notice, guys, when I asked Chopper about Four Sibonos Expireds, he didn't really, he, he said he had some other, there's doing, doing it for him. And it was kind of an ancillary piece of his business. So I want to encourage you. And, and Chop, do you work with buyers as well? I don't anymore, no. Okay, but, uh, but you did for some time though, right? Oh, yeah. I used to come home with black and blues because some of our competitors would use those terrible lenses, those fisheye lenses, and they make a four by four room look like 14 by 16. And the buyers would like punch me. Oh, this is terrible. I'm like, yo, dude, that's not me and the dog in front. I didn't take these pictures. 
Go punch the guy that has faces in the front, not me. Yeah, I'm yeah. home all black and blue. They'd be yelling at me, you know? So how has – so now you, you, you advertise also digitally on, you know, these different portals. Oh, yes. Where are we at, where are we at today now with the, with the team? So what, what brought you to the top 20 in the nation on Real Trends? What's, what got you there? What do you think got you there? I know your team helped, helped assist it, but what, what was the key component? You've got to break it down for our, our, uh, our listeners. It's really come, I mean, look, only a couple of years ago, I started to pay attention to everybody we did a transaction with. I mean, we, you know, I'm, I'm kind of scatterbrained. I mean, after all these years, I finally got the best uh, um, executive assistant transaction and, uh, you know, listing coordinator. So, nice. Yeah, it, it's changed my life. I've gone through about seven of them and it took me 10 years and I finally got the right one and my life has changed. And that, that's, that's important for everyone to hear, right? So you, you've gone through quite a few, and at, but, but the most important key, Chopper, is even though you've gone through a few, your business still kept on growing. So don't be discouraged, I'm hearing. I'm hearing don't be discouraged. It still oh, yeah. helped you. So for those moments in time that you had those administrative assistants, they still helped you, but you felt like you could take it to the next level. Is that correct? Yes. And, you know, we just, you don't quit, you know, um, what's the expression? You don't, you don't quit until the magic happens or, you know. Yeah. So we got a couple of questions as we're rolling through this. Uh, one of the questions is how big is the team? So it's, uh, I do the listing side. Patrick runs our commercial division. He also does some residential deals. Um, Jessica is our lead buyer's agent. My brother Gino does the rentals, also a buyer's agent. And, and Jen is my true eagle. Jen's my exec, executive administrator. She takes care of everything. Now, so we, got, so we got a team of uh, five. Is that total, including you? Is it five? Yeah. And then uh, we got tall Tommy, the intern. Tommy came to me his junior year of high school. He's about 6'6. Six, six. He calls me. He goes, uh, I want to intern, but I heard they don't pay any money. I said, dude, that's like the closest thing to indentured servant that you can come. I said, come visit with me, but we pay him now. We've been paying him. So he's got a, he just finished his first year at Montclair. Hopefully he'll be getting his uh, real estate license. And then Carol's getting her real estate license and she's going to become our ISA. Nice. So, so you're going to, you're going to add an ISA, but you got to top 20 in the nation with five people, including yourself. Is that right? Correct. Nice, nice. And, you know, it's, it, it chop. what I've always said, uh, there's really, there's no in-between team. I think it's kind of lean and mean, and uh, you're absolutely lean and mean. You know, got to, you got a lot of hyper-specialists on, in your organization. You're the rainmaker, and then you've got other people supporting you, and naturally they're, they're earning out as well. So we got a couple more questions over here. Mm -hmm. uh, another question that is asked is, uh, Chopper, when do you send out the postcards? Are you doing monthly, quarterly? What's uh, what's what's the frequency on that? Um, at least at least monthly. I also do just listed and just sold. I have not only a geo. So so chop just so we can stay on track. So monthly, what is that? Is that is that a farm uh, postcard? Because you mentioned just listed, just sold. What's what's on, what's on your monthly? What does okay. that look like? So let's talk about every door direct mail. That's consistent. That's where come to the ladies pancake and blah, 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 you know, that's okay. So I want to break that down for our, for our agents here. So what you're doing is your nonprofit work. That's your everyday direct mail. Is that what that is? Yes. Every month plus additional towns. Plus additional towns. So basically it's like circle prospecting for marketing. You just boom, just spray it out there. And then, uh, you know, these are to invite them to the, the causes that you have. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And you know, because of COVID, we were like, there was one other agent um, that I'm fond of that's a competitor. She advertised and I advertised. We're the only ones that really advertised during this. But she only did one town. I did like a half a dozen towns. And now what else? So I think the question was, so you got that. That's one. And so you, and then you do just listed, just sold. So is that every single listing? What, what's yes. the? Yes. Got it. And it depends where the town is. You know, of and course, what's, what's, how many, how many mail outs are you doing? I think there was actually the follow-up question to that was just, listed, what's, oh, what's the radius? So how far away from the just, how, how far away from the just listed? 
Oh, um, quarter mile, half a mile. No, I, I just do a quantity, uh, a hundred, 140 that are close to them. Plus if it's a town where I have other names and numbers, like here, when I do Oakland, it's uh, five five 570 cards go out. When I do Mawa, it's about 205. When I do Ringwood, it's uh, about 300. Wanakue is about 250. Uh, Franklin Lakes is about 200. So it really I was, just depends on the neighborhood or, or yeah. the, the township. Mm -hmm. But like here, I just did East Rutherford, which is not an area we do. So that was 140. On the just listed, just sold, it's always 140 basis. Got it, got it. So the 140 basis in. in and now, do you do a follow up call to these folks, or you just send to hey, boom, here's 140. Let's see what happens. What, what's what's yeah. your next move? No, I can't. I don't have I don't have the time or or the staff. Okay, no, I'm just I just want to share with people what what your approach is. And would you say has that been effective? So every single listing you're spraying it. Um, what would you say? What, what what would you say the return on investment has been? Roughly. Um, Only once when I was out of my area, I was in Morris Plains, that I got two deals from the postcard. Okay. But I, I four-sided it. I got double ends on both sides. So that's the one that keeps me going. So on nice. a percentage basis, you know, it's it's hard. I'm such an aggressive advertiser. I mean, I had the only billboard in Ringwood. Now they widened the damn road and they took it down to the son of a gun. Um, okay. Well, that's a, that's a good point, though. Since you're an aggressive advertiser, it's really – impression based it sounds like so you've got the 140 uh just listed but you're also dependent on you know your nonprofit stuff your your videos your social media and your billboards so it's all encompassing it's just boom you can't you can't turn without seeing your logo uh for your team is that right yeah and the fun here i'll tell you two different stories before I even had a billboard, people were like, oh, I saw your billboard. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't have one. <laughs> and then in, te in uh, the, the big grocery store, the shop, right? I was the first one to do those when you walk in and they say rah, rah, rah. So I was the first one to do that back in like 2010. So I stopped doing it. And people were like, oh, I saw the shop, right? And I hadn't been there for three years. You well, know? So... And so I love this strategy because it really is impression based. It's find the most bang for your buck, continue hitting people with the impressions. And then of course, naturally they'll, they'll see your signs. So they'll see you on the portals, you know, like realtor.com, Zillow and, and, and such. So literally it's almost like they see you everywhere. Right. And that, and that's kind of the, the idea. Yeah. I mean, it just kind of evolved that way. You know, I don't say no to the local softball team and this and that, you know, a hundred bucks here, a hundred bucks there. Oh, for like yeah, buying the jerseys and things like that? I'm big on TVs. I must give away 20, at least 20, 55 inch 4k Samsung TVs every year. Wow. So, beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. That's very nice. Let's see if we have more questions. Hey, can I give a shout out? I, who I see over there? Simon with Simon. Hey, Simon. Yeah, I think I think Simon is here. Uh, May was here. Oh, what is May? 7777. <laughs> Fight gas. Yeah, so average price point, Fight was 450. Yep. Uh, Fight is asking for you to send a TV here. <laughs> so now we talked about past, present. Where are we going with this, Chopper? We're coming out of stay at home. And I know Jersey was a little bit different. We don't necessarily need to talk about the stay at home, but where do you see us going? I know we're not an economist, but certainly you've been through enough sales cycles in the real estate space. Where do you see us going with this? Where does, so I've got two questions for you. One, economically, from your perspective, where do you see us for the remaining part of the year and the beginning part of next year in the real estate space? All right, well, I have to throw myself in there, okay? as I told you, my background. So heretofore, I was always an office guy, office guy. And I've said this now a thousand times. Had I not got forced to work at a home, I wouldn't know how good it is, how efficient we are, and how beneficial to our team. A month and a half ago, I got Jen, our executive assistant that lives down the block from me, her copy scanner for the house. At that time, I said, we'll go back to the office three days a week. A few weeks ago, we were like, we'll go back one day a week. Now, we're not going back. 
We're more efficient this way. Um, so right now there's a great demand for a low inventory. So we're in, we're in towns where heretofore we never had bidding wars. We're having bidding wars. But there's a flip side to this, all right? Number one, I know that for my connections in the city and I, and I sell a lot of restaurants, a lot of restaurants will not survive in, in Manhattan. But here's the call I got last week. Ladies, a school teacher says, my husband's company realizes we don't need to live here. Please come put our house up for sale because we're moving to Michigan, back to Michigan. My other buddy runs a big computer company for all these hedge funds and stuff. He says, he owns, he's about 30 years old, he's done well in real estate. He has three investment properties plus his home. He goes, if they tell me that I don't have to come in anymore, you're selling everything and I'm moving south. So right now, it's basic economics, it's supply and demand. There are more buyers than sellers. So will it last? I don't know. You know, um, how, and, you how do, and how do you see us in 2021? So we're just roughing it. I mean, do, do you think that, as you said, will it last? What's your prediction? Just for fun, what do you think? Do you think that, uh, you know, we're in the transaction business, Chopper. Mm -hmm. uh, so all that really means is that uh, if there's sustainable supply and demand and we're, we're kind of in a healthy clip, everybody's okay. So well, what do, you, do you think we'll have uh, the W-shaped recovery as they're predicting, right, you, you know, where this, this goes up? Uh, well, rather it went down, it goes up, it goes down, then back up. Or do you think we're just going to shoot up like a rocket? No, I think we'll have a little bit of adjustment, um, an adjustment. I think um, sale-wise will probably be only about four, four, four point three million nationally, which is off the normal five million that we've been doing for the last ten years. Uh, I will tell you this: uh, when I was a furniture manufacturer, when it was um, uh, Bush one versus Clinton, our business dropped from Labor Day to Election Day. We made up for it after Election Day up until New Year's that we were even working Sundays. And I had forecast that when it was uh, Clinton versus Trump and we dropped and after the election, you know, a lot of times, by the way, it's not political. People don't yeah. like uncertainty. Markets don't like uncertainty. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle, if, if it's too close to call, people cocoon, they turtle in. This looks like it's going to be too close to call like the last one. So it'll probably be good to maybe the middle of October. I would really say October 1st. And then so we'll do it until October, and then we'll take a little bit of a pause, and then whatever happens, it'll clear it out once the, the election is over. Is that what you're thinking? Yes, but here's my problem. I have enough people in northern New Jersey because they're at a mature age they're heading out of Dodge for better taxes. I mean, I've sent enough people to Delaware, Maryland, the Carolinas, Texas, Arizona, Florida. I mean, um, I hope they go to Arizona. I got about 500 acres in, in, <laughs> in Bullhead, Arizona. It's right across the, uh, the border from Laughlin, Nevada. It's nothing but stone and, and rattlesnakes. Anyway, that's a story for another day. It's, but it's 500 acres though. Yeah, yeah, a lot of rattlesnakes. Um, Listen, it's, it, it's hard to tell. Right now, we're running with it. Um, no great expectations. Uh, these mature adults are in the high-risk category, and they're generally the ones that have been selling and exiting. Um, you know, and that's what you're seeing. Uh, now, the, the question a lot of folks ask uh, us at the office is, there's been a lot of reports of this uh, exodus. And from what we're seeing, exodus from, like, the city, and we're not really seeing that as much in the in many of the areas that our, our company specializes in, in mainly in Brooklyn and Staten Island. Mm -hmm. um, are you seeing people coming into Jersey at an abnormal clip than you've seen in the years past, uh, in the past you know, month or two? You know, when I was younger, I, I saved up enough money to buy a Thunderbird. Once I bought the Thunderbird, I didn't realize how many Thunderbirds were on the road. Same here. I mean, I'm more sensitive to that now about people coming because everybody's talking about it. I do know I've seen a few more people from Manhattan buying what we would consider for them a secondary home than a primary home. Ah, got and it. that's in Passaic County. You know, around here on this side of the mountain in Bergen County, I mean, I have a few people pop in from Jersey City and Hoboken and a couple places, but it's pretty much the norm. 
But like the I norm, said, right. yeah. we're more sensitive to it. What I'm worried about is the analogy or the situation I told you about Michigan and my computer guy. Okay. You know, for Jersey, we've always been, a, you know, a suburb. All of, all of northern New Jersey has been a suburb of uh, New York. But here's the situation. Uh, a friend of a friend works for a company, and every year they're going to go back to the city. And that company scrambled and got big office space in Edison, New Jersey. So, you know, it, it's too hard to tell, you know. Um, J.P. Morgan Chase was talking about um, the office space and what have you what they need. But here, Pearson Educational with a state of art facility in Hoboken has gutted their uh, cafeteria and to retrofit for this, uh, you know, uh, for this safe distancing. So. Yeah. So we're going to see a lot of change. So now as we, as we close out our, our conversation, let's talk about technology and it's been in our space for some time. In fact, for, for a lot of us, as we've always discussed in our mastermind groups, Chopper, you know, the, the tech is there, but a lot of agents are not necessarily adopting all that was even there uh, prior to uh, the, the stay at home. And now it seems that we're seeing higher adoption rate of technology, agents becoming a lot more equipped or, or rather understanding and playing with it and then adopting it into their business. What do you see going down? Just and, and tell me what's near and dear to your heart when it comes to technology and enabling the agent with the technology. Listen, if I got one more request for a webinar to do walkthrough videos and drone photography, I was going to throw my computer in the, in the lake. Number one, I was doing drone photography when it was illegal, and I kind of tell people I got a <laughs> helicopter. All right. I've been, I, was, I was doing Matterport years ago, and I had to drop it because all the, all the major portals couldn't support that file. So we've been doing walkthrough videos forever. We've been doing, um, we've been doing uh, floor plans. So all this stuff that everybody's catching up on, I'm like, what are you talking about? This is old. I'm looking for the next new thing. But to answer your question, what I like about the tech, Jersey's average realtor age is like 65 Point six months. That's entirely too old. So hopefully it'll shake some people out of there. And, and, and text a bonus. I mean, look, the only thing about COVID for me personally is, like I said, had an outbreak for COVID, I wouldn't know how efficient, how great it is to work out of my house. You know? Very nice. And so I, I love what you said, and I really would like to cap off uh, the meeting, the, our conversation around that. Uh, we talked about the, the exodus. We talked, and, and you said, you don't see any abnormal movement. And then we talked about technology and we don't see any abnormal movement. So really, although people, this perception of this, this massive change, what I'm hearing is the same thing you're hearing is there hasn't been this massive change. There's just some more increased adoption of technology and the, the, the exodus is just not there um, as of yet anyway, for sure. So guys, any more questions coming from you guys? Uh, you guys asked a lot of great questions. Can, can I give a little plug for something? Oh, That's please. Go ahead. All right. So we got this freaking data. I got 47,000 freaking people on my, in my CRM. So I've been doing a constant contact. And when we're at the conference in, in Vegas, Remax put that company first. All right. And I'm not saying because it's Remax, blah, 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 because I know you have people not here. So we got... 46,000 people, I got this ISA coming on and, and like, she's flipping out. So I got first, I only dumped in like 8,400 names out of the 46,000. And what I like about it, well, what I didn't like about it is I lost like 14 deals had I been using that. But I like how it, it does the three star and we started to test it and it's right. So my tip of the week, is and I, I fell in love with this thing, and I'm not a Remax uh, red, white, and blue guy. For me, with all these darn, you know, with all these leads, it gives me a three star, two star, and one star. So we have uh, out of 8,400, we have 1,100 potentials, of which I think about 700 were three stars. If so, Chopper, let me just make, make sure we're clear. So, uh, Chopper is a Remax agent. Uh, I know, I know what you're saying. You know, you, you like the brand, but it's it's you know. You, you, you're always, uh, you use it, you use it at, at, as you need it, right? Uh, and I think you meant more of like you waving a flag. You're more of 
you leverage it, you like it. Uh, no, I so love it. One- this app is great. I mean, listen, do you want to fish? Do you want to fish in the ocean or you want to fish in a hot tub? This freaking first app, it tells you. In fact, they have a buddy of mine on there, okay? <laughs> and I know where he is in the process, and they gave him two stars. You know, some kind of lo- logarithm. I don't know how to explain it. I tell everybody it's like a recipe, all right? Maybe there's seven ingredients because they have all this data from all these people from the last 10, 20 years, and they did all these actions before they bought a house. And that's what it lines it up. Look, I'd rather fish in a hot tub than in, in the ocean. It's a lot yeah, easier. So, so for some of our, for some of our uh, listeners, some people may not be affiliated with Remax yet. So Remax purchased a company called First.io. Uh, it's a technology, uh, it's an application rather, that sifts through your, your database and tells you the likelihood of them selling in the next, uh, is it six months, right? I think so. All I know is I see three stars. I get all excited. I don't know what it means. All I know is it works. We tested it. And, and like I said, hey, I hey, hey, Chop, isn't, that, isn't that all that matters, right? As long as it works and you get, get better opportunities to speak to them. So first.io, uh, it was free for, it's free for the first three months. I think it is uh, for Remax uh, agents and it's exclusively part of the Remax uh, uh, technology suite. So, well, Chop, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for your time. This has been very uh, meaningful and powerful. I know it has been. And uh, yeah, this is this has been good. So stay, keep pushing. I hope to see your, your name continue to rise. I know it will. You're, you're a superstar in the Real Trends Report. And thank you for sharing this with our agents and our local industry. Uh, really means a lot to me. So thank you very much, Chopra. And I know that with my team and, and members of your office, we've done some referrals and stuff. So whatever you guys need because we do commercials. I do a lot of businesses. By the way, oh, Mike, I sold another diner. I got a chopper uh, uh, cheeseburger. It's like 80,000 calories, two patties, tail of ham, uh, egg. It's delicious. It's delicious. Um, but you're a marketing machine, Chopper. By the way, if you go to certain stores in New Jersey, uh, Chopper's got sandwiches and, and, uh, and, and burgers named after him. So uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Broccoli, I got a broccoli rob one coming. A regular chopper. <laughs> that, is an angry chopper. that damn angry chopper burnt my mouth. He had so many peppers on it, my own. But it was Unbelievable. Crazy. You know, it's amazing how you you got in this diamond club. It's uh, you really built out a machine, you know, to get to these levels. I remember I was at a Remax conference and they said for, uh, as an industry, less than one percent, it's like 0.25 percent of agents ever make it to a million GCI plus so congratulations to you and congratulations to success of your team to all of your team congratulations thank you chopper thank you and Mike you've always been a dear friend and you've helped me with a lot of things over the years and that I appreciate it it's my pleasure so thank you thank you for contributing today as well one time I remember you saved my ass big time and I thank you <laughs> you got it chop my pleasure all right buddy Enjoy thanks guys the weather you too thanks chop bye-bye